coming up, the family that glides together and a new glider altitude record. Take a trip to a forbidden city that changed the course of history. We fly into Los Alamos. And remembering a hero. Well, I think I'd like to be remembered as a not a very good aviator. Uh, a fair politician, although a loser. Uh, and perhaps most of all for a guy who loved his country. AOP Live this week begins in just a moment. Build and flying with the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Redding. It's a new world record and it continues to evolve. I'm Tom Haynes. And I'm Warren Morningstar, in for Melissa. At the time we are recording this, the record stands at 65,605 feet in a glider. <laughs> the Airbus Perlin Mission 2 reaching new heights this week. Pilots Jim Payne and Morgan Sandricock set the record in the Argentine Andes. They broke their own record from last year. The pressurized glider is designed to soar up to 90,000 feet. Morgan Sandercock says the group chooses to fly in the P Patagonia because of the very specific conditions that they need. There's a lot of different sources of lift, as we call it, of different forms of rising air. But what we're looking for with the Pearl Ann 2 is wave lift, which is caused downwind of a big mountain range under a, a very specific set of conditions of wind speed and temperature profile in the atmosphere. The glider was built in Oregon and is based in Nevada. Aside from the altitude records, the project is designed to help study the upper atmosphere. Flights are continuing this week. And speaking of soaring, the family in our next story spends their time sharing the love of flight at their sky sailing glider flight school in California. AOPA senior features editor Julie Walker has the story. At a small glider port in the remote town of Warner Springs, California, the Willett family shares a multi-generational love for flying sailplanes. It's the real sport of aviation because an airplane, you want to go someplace. You might go up and do a little bit of go, go to get the $200 hamburger, but really the sailplane, you're working with nature. You want to make the sailplane do what you want it to do and to be able to stay and just enjoy yourself. Soaring is so ingrained in this family, the parents, Brett and Karen, got married in flight. Karen and I were in one sailplane, the minister was with us, and then her mom and dad were in another sailplane off our left wing. So we were in a formation of five gliders and five tow planes, and there we were getting married over the San Francisco Bay. Sons Garrett and Boyd arrived, and the boys flew for the first time when they were just weeks old, and they grew up at the airport. One of the things is everybody used to ask when I was growing up, well, what is it like living on an airport? And my response was always, what's it like living in suburbia? You know, I don't know any different. I, I thought everybody lives on an airport, because, I mean, that's, that's what we did, and I, I thought everybody has an airport runway in their backyard. Boyd and Garrett both soloed gliders on their 14th birthdays but soloing one sailplane was not nearly enough. You know, Garrett soloed 18 different sailplanes on his 14th birthday, and imagine that. You can't even drive a car, but here he is soloing 18 different sailplanes. He set a world record that was incredible. And then his little brother comes along, has to beat it. So he soloed 23 gliders. From solo, the brothers grew their skills and followed in their father's footsteps, performing in air shows as the sailplane magic air show team. But the thrill of the air show circuit isn't what the Willets are all about. They are most passionate about sharing the love of soaring with the public. My favorite thing in aviation is with students and rides, is, is seeing their excitement level. You have somebody that's never been up before and they come out and we have a lot of rides that are surprises and you know, or birthday presents, they have no idea what they're, what they're in for and, and when they enjoy it. And you know, they come back and they just, you know, big smile and, and, you know, and they're just you know, bouncing around and, and just seeing that transformation. The Willets aren't just passionate about sharing the love of soaring with others, but also within their own family. 
the Willett family aviation bug seems to be spreading to yet another generation. I think it's pretty cool that I have family that knows how to fly and can teach me how to fly when I grow up. I think it's pretty cool that none of the other elementary students can fly a plane. And so, it seems, the love of flying in the Willett family will live for years to come. Julie Walker, AOPA Live. You can read all about the Willets in the upcoming October issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. Wow, what family aviation traditions. <laughs> I, uh, my good Lord, 23 different aircraft. <laughs> I mean, I've been flying for over mm, years, and I think maybe I've got 10 different aircraft yeah. in my logbook. <laughs> yeah, that is very impressive to me. 14 as well. And amazing. Yeah. Indeed. Well, a legal battle over ADSB technology. Garmin has filed suit against UAvionics alleging patent infringement. The lawsuit claims that UAvionics has used patented technology that Garmin calls AutoSquawk that automatically parses information required by ADSB from the aircraft's existing transponder. Garmin uses the technology in its GDL 82, 84, and 88 avionics. UAvionics disputes the allegation and said in a statement that the suit will not affect its certification or delivery of ADSB hardware. And more news from Garmin this week. The company has acquired FlightPlan.com. According to the press release, FlightPlan users create more than 6 million flight plans a year. Garmin expects the flight management and planning tools on the site will work well with Garmin's suite of offerings. Hawaii is still recovering after a brush with Hurricane Lane. The storm dumped feet of rain on the islands, causing widespread flooding. The Civil Air Patrol jumped in to help and assess the damage. They are flying aerial survey missions and helping on the ground. CAP cadets are documenting the flooding for FEMA by taking pictures of water levels using the FEMA app. And a familiar face in the flight training industry will help lead the Civil Air Patrol into the future. Martha King of King Schools has been appointed to the Civil Air Patrol's Board of Governors. Martha, along with her husband John, of course, have been staples in the flight training industry for decades. Congratulations, Martha, and thank you for your service. And congratulations to another fan, uh, friend of ours. You know, it's good to be the leader of the pack. That's right where Michael Goulian is this week, the AOPA ambassador and aerobatic superstar. Pulling to the front, Goulian leads the points race with the Red Bull Air Race World Championship Series. The lead comes after an impressive number two finish in Kazan, Russia. Now the series roars on with four more races this season, including two in the U.S. You can get exclusive access to one of them. Join AOPA at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway October 6th for the Brickyard Bash. You can find out details on our website. And Mike's got to be one of the nicest guys in the whole world. He really is, and we wish you well, Mike. Good luck with that. Well, when we come back, a look inside the once top secret Los Alamos. Big monument to history. The AOPA World MasterCard delivers generous cashback rewards in all of your favorite aviation categories so you can do more of what you love, flying. And because every purchase helps to support general aviation, every cardholder is helping to protect the freedom to fly. Apply now for the AOPA World MasterCard, the best card for pilots. Welcome back. This week, we reflect on the life of a famous pilot and patriot. Senator John McCain lost his battle with brain cancer. The war hero turned senator talked about his time as a Navy combat pilot back in 2001 with Russ Hodge of Legends of Air Power. It's an environment of intense um, uh, attention focusing. There's certain fear, but that fear is, is a controlled fear and it's a healthy fear. But there's also the uh, focusing of the mind, your attentions, your reflexes uh, in a situation that obviously your, your life is in danger. But it's also a certain amount of excitement. You know, the excitement of the hitting the target or dodging the missile or uh, that kind of thing is also, um, it's, it's a very exciting and very adrenaline inducing well, I think I'd like to be remembered as not a very good aviator, uh, 
a fair politician, although a loser, uh, and perhaps most of all for a guy who loved his country. McCain flew AD-6 Sky Raiders, T-2 Buckeyes, and A-4 Skyhawks in the Navy. Godspeed, John McCain. Yeah, an incredible man. Uh, you always knew where John McCain stood, yep. as we discovered on several different issues through the years. That's but true. We didn't always see eye to eye, did we? We did not, <laughs> but at the end of the day, we always managed to shake hands and, and come out of it friends. That's right. Yeah. It says a lot about him. It does indeed. Well, it's home to one of the most iconic aircraft of all time, and now it boasts an official historic marker. The Goodyear Blimp Base at Wingfoot Lake has been designated an Ohio landmark and historic site. This year is the 100th anniversary of the hangar. To mark the occasion, Goodyear is christening its latest blimp, technically a semi-rigid airship, this week. It's the sister ship to Wingfoot One, and we'll have more about the Goodyear airships and what it's like to fly one in a future edition of AOPA Live. And what an impressive building that is. Well, the search for a future replacement for leaded avgas continues. The Piston Aviation Fuels Initiative Steering Committee met here at AOPA to take stock of progress so far. Mark Baker asked the program manager for an update. The PAFI was started as a, an effort to come up with a replacement unleaded avgas, and it really takes a, a collaborative effort between government and the FAA and the industry to, uh, to make that happen. Originally, uh, PAFI was scheduled to complete in December 2018. Um, through the test program, we have run into some issues with the fuel, uh, with the fuels, and we've taken a little break to let the fuel producers come up and develop mitigations uh, for the issues that they've each encountered with their, with their fuels. Swift Fuels was one of two formulations being evaluated at the F.A. Hughes Testing Center as part of the PAFI process. They just announced this week that they are suspending their work as part of PAFI. Swift has transitioned to another high-octane unleaded fuel that is not a part of the PAFI program. Shell remains in the program, however, and is working on some reformulations. Meanwhile, Philip 66 and Afton are working on an unleaded avgas, as is GAMI. Both are outside PAFI, but aren't excluded from consideration. PAFI is aware of that activity, and we're interested in uh, seeing what else is coming down the pike. So while we're on this um, break and development, working with the fuel offers within PAFI to develop mitigating actions. We're also inviting uh, fuel offers outside of PAFI that are working on unleaded formulations to bring their data forward and we can evaluate uh, what they put together and if it looks like a viable alternative, we'd like to bring it in and do some preliminary testing um, and, and see uh, you know, so we have visibility into all the unleaded uh, fuel solutions out there. And you can watch the full interview with FA's Peter White on AOPALive.org. And it will be here before you know it. The AOPA fly-in to Santa Fe, New Mexico is now just two weeks away. Now, I was in Santa Fe last week to get a preview of some of the things this fly-in has to offer. Great thing about our AOPA fly-ins are the uh, organized fly-outs. Santa Fe is no exception with two fly-in opportunities. Now, the actual fly-out is to the storied Atomic City, a once-secret mountaintop community. At one time, this was the most secret place in all the world, and it was the home of the science that finally ended World War II. It's a short 23-mile flight from Santa Fe to Los Alamos, but the airport offers a few challenges. It's high, a little over 7,000 feet, but on a hot day, the density altitude can easily reach 11,000 feet. It sits on the edge of a plateau, the optical illusion of landing on an aircraft carrier. You need to be prepared for different visual cues. And it's a one-way strip. A go-around is risky if you've already touched down. But it's a reasonably long runway, about 6,000 feet. And as you can see, we handled it easily in a 172 with two pretty big guys on board. So check out the pilot's briefing on our website. Now, once in Los Alamos, you can explore the science behind the Manhattan Project and the bombs that ended the war with Japan. Visit some of the storied sites, like the Fuller Lodge that housed scientists such as Robert Oppenheimer as they unlock the secrets of the atom. 
Uh, we bring them up here and go through that cut, and then just before we actually get to the town of Taos, we turn right and go into Angel Fire. Another flying opportunity will be the New Mexico Pilots Association Mountain Flying Clinic. It begins on Thursday, so you can attend the clinic and participate in many of the flying activities. So we hope to see you in Santa Fe. No exaggeration, this is a bucket list opportunity. I, I, I love Santa Fe, Tom. Yeah, it's I, a I great town. It really is. You know, and what, what's interesting for flying there is that within a very short distance, you can go from a high desert scrub to mountain pines. It's it's a great place to fly. Really, is beautiful. But that Los Alamos thing looks very interesting. I'd, I'd like to go spend some time there. So hopefully, hopefully yeah, that yeah. works out. You know what our schedules are like at these things, whether it'll <laughs> yes. happen or not. We'll see. But. Hey, and if you live in the middle of the country, don't despair. AOP has a fly-in for you just a few weeks after Santa Fe. The fly-in to Carbondale, Illinois, presented by Southern Illinois University Aviation, will take place October 5th and 6th. The eclectic college town of Carbondale has something for everyone. Surrounded by forests, picturesque lakes, and scenic byways, we'll have more on Carbondale in the coming weeks. But until then, you can find out all the details at our fly-in websites. And finally this week, a lesson of doing it wrong and getting it wrong. We've really never had any problems. Um, they've been, the airports run very well. And Hazelden told us that he believes the issue was with a defective flux capacitator, though the NTSB wouldn't comment on any potential cause today. Go Skydive Boston didn't respond to a written request for comment. That's Boston TV 25 reporter Catherine Burkham. She reports that a pilot at the scene told her that the skydiving airplane may have crashed because of a faulty flux capacitor. Okay, come on. We all know that a flux capacitor is a fictional piece of time travel hardware from the Back to the Future series, but if you're going to talk to the media, don't be a troll. Or if you're a reporter, don't believe stuff pilots tell you, apparently. Well, and, you know, now, now to, defend the re to defend the reporter, you know, as you know, I've been on both sides of the fence uh, as, yes, we as, a as a journalist and as, a, as a, a spokesperson, and I... I like to tell people that a journalist is someone who starts the day without knowing a thing about a subject. Yes. By the end of the day, has to be an expert at right. it and explain it to other right. people too. So, you know, let's cut them some slack. And right. the best thing that our pilots can do is to befriend, befriend a reporter yes. and help them understand aviation. Yes, and, and not confuse them with flux capacitors, capacitors. and things like that. <laughs> Well, hey, that's it for this week. If you have any comments about the program, shoot us a note. The address is AOPA Live at AOPA.org. See you next Thursday.